The following program is sponsored by the Today's Home Remodeler Television Network. Welcome to today's Home Remodeler. I'm Stuart Keith and on today's show, well, we're walking through the professional window replacement process. We'll begin by meeting with Andy Lindis from Lindis Construction to see why windows in a 15 year old home are being replaced. Next, we'll review the removal and installation process for a new window. And we'll finish up today's show learning about what to expect when getting a window estimate and how you can save a little money in the process. So we have a lot to cover today, and we'll get started right after these messages. Can you imagine having to replace windows in a 15-year-old home? Well, that's just what we're doing on today's show, and it's actually more common than you would think. So let's head out to our project and see why these windows are being replaced. Well Andy, great day for doing some remodeling and in this home it looks like they're replacing some windows? Yeah, you know, a big upgrade not only in the type of window but for energy efficiency. Going from some slider windows along their whole upstairs to our casement windows, they're going to notice a big difference in the air infiltration. Okay, so what was the situation to lead these homeowners to the replacement process? I mean. This looks to be about a 15 year old home. That doesn't seem very old to be replacing windows. You know, you wouldn't think so. The windows were installed around 2001, 2002. We can actually look at the glass and see the date it was made. And as you can see here, these windows are in rough shape. They weren't operating correctly and they just look terrible. And that's the biggest problem with a lot of these windows is the glass pack that's used. I mean, this is a well-known manufacturer here, but builders, they go with the lowest grade possible. I know for sure that this manufacturer makes a great window when you go to the upper line one, but the builder model, that's all you're gonna get is 15 years. There are so many homes that have wood windows in them instead of the alternative being vinyl. And when you look back, I mean, what could have a homeowner have done to prevent this? I mean, that would have been a lot of maintenance. There was a moisture problem in this house, first and foremost. And that's one thing that anytime you work with us, we're gonna test everything. And they needed to add some bath fans, which we're doing for them. And this being a dual pane glass, I can tell you exactly what's happening here. I guarantee you in this winter time, these windows frosted up. And with our windows being triple pane, no matter what the moisture level, it has a really hard time frosting up because the front of the glass, the part that's inside your house, mm -hmm. where the warm air meets it, isn't going to be nearly as cold as like a window like this. It's zero degrees outside. This window is going to frost up for sure. That moisture, once it starts to melt, is going to get into the wood and it's a perfect spot for mold and mildew to grow. Sure, I mean, I've seen it on lots of different windows, lots of different homes where in the winter months, it might not actually be frozen, but there is a lot of moisture that accumulates down at the bottom. And yeah. like you said, this is a great case in point that if you have a wood window, chances are if you're not maintaining it meticulously, this is what's gonna happen. I get asked all the time, what type of window do you wanna put in your house? What type of window would you use? And I, I have really good relationships with a lot of different manufacturers, and there's a lot of really good windows out there. But I know that I never want to deal with my windows. I want a lifetime warranty on everything, and I never wanna to have to refinish them. This window probably wouldn't have this mold and mildew had every other year it been resealed. Yeah, but who has the time to do that, to walk around to every window in a house? There might be 15, 20 windows. Some houses have 100 windows in them. Nobody has that type of time or the wherewithal to hire somebody to come in and maintain the windows on an annual or biannual basis. No, and I know I definitely don't, and most of my customers, that's why we're coming out. They didn't have the time to maintain these windows, and you can see this is what happens. Okay, and so over here, these are at least one example of what they're putting in here. 
Is this a vinyl window versus the wood that we were looking at? It is, and I'm seeing more and more people choose this one. More and more new construction is choosing vinyl or fiberglass. And like I told you, I meet with window manufacturers all the time. I can install any window that you absolutely want, but I know this, our season guard window with how this is made, it's vinyl window, fiberglass reinforced, it's got a wood grain interior so it can match almost any trim. This is the window that you're never gonna have to worry about. Lifetime warranty on all moving parts. A lifetime warranty on seal failure. A lifetime finish warranty. Anything that you can think of, this warranty is gonna be covered. If something like that were to happen to my window 15 years down the road, it'd be replaced for free. Any of the other manufacturers, you get what, two years on a warranty? That doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, and being that it's a, a vinyl window, they're not gonna have to worry about rot. No. Not gonna have to worry about the mildew. You mentioned that it's a triple pane window. And so the triple pane really makes all the difference in the world? It does, especially in our market. You know, we want to talk about solar heat gain, yes. But most importantly, when it's zero outside, I can put a laser pointer on my window and that pane of glass is going to read around 60 degrees. You're never going to get that with a dual pane wood window, never. Really? And so when you look at here, if I'm going through the window replacement process, should I pay attention to the National Fenestration Rating Council numbers here, like a 0 0.3 or a 0.38 when you're talking about visible transmittance? Yes, but people get really confused on the numbers. U value, R value, solar heat gain. The number one thing I want to see in a window. When the window is closed, how much air is going to leak through this? national average it has to get to for residential is 0.3 and that's where almost all of the manufacturers get to talk about how much air can get in the house and talk about warranties 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 yep that's for sure and you know there's lots of different features lots of different options on windows and what i like to tell people is do your homework be an educated consumer and that's gonna ultimately lead you to the right contractor who's going to be there in the long run and who has all the right products to offer you and ultimately you can make the right choice for your situation. Yeah, you know, a lot of people have good windows. It's not just about the window. There's a lot of things that goes into our installation process which I think is really what sets us apart. And you can have the best product in the world but as we mentioned on shows previously, Best products are only good if they're installed properly. Yeah. And your guys are second to none. So let's go see what the guys are up to. As they can see, they're well on their way to installing this last window. Sounds good. Stay tuned. We'll continue with today's home remodeler after these messages. Replacing windows can look pretty easy when you're watching a how-to video or a TV show with professionals who do it every day. But in reality, there are a lot of special tools and skills needed to do the job correctly. So let's meet up with Andy Lindis from Lindis Construction to see how a window is properly replaced. Well, here's the rough opening, and you know, as I glance at it, it's in remarkably good shape. I was expecting it to be in worse shape because of all the moisture problems. Yeah, you know, can you imagine what they'd have waited for two, three more years, and that rot would have gotten from the window frame actually into the rough opening? How much more work and money that would have cost them? That's why when you see telltale signs like that mold on the window, that's the time to act. Don't wait for the window to be falling apart because when that happens, usually water's in the frame. Do you run into that very often where it's actually rotting out the frame? You know, I'd probably say about half the amount of time we're fixing some of the wood inside the rough opening or some of the sheathing on the outside of the wall. And a lot of the time, the reason that's happening is because of poor installation. I mean, off camera, you were sharing with me that incredible story how you took a perfectly good window, but it was installed incorrectly and there are a lot of big problems. Yeah, you know, made a mistake and somebody, a customer of ours had seen our show, wanted the season guard window, but they had a contractor building a pole barn with the mother-in-law quarters on it. And then they said, you know what, we can install the windows if you can get them. So I said, you know what, fine, I'm just going to go order the windows for you, sell you the windows, you guys can install them, against my better judgment. About six months later, 
I get a phone call saying, hey, the windows seem to be leaking air. Um, my mother-in-law says it's cold and drafting the room. I said, well, that doesn't sound right. I'll come out to the house and we'll take a look at it. And I bring, of course, Jake and Jim, the guys we have working on this job, <laughs> you know, been partners for seven years. This is with all of my window guys. They, they get a partnership and, and they just continue to use it and get more efficient as the years go by. In a half a day, but again, Six hours we're going to spend there and go through from window to window to window. None of them were foamed properly. They weren't shimmed properly. They weren't set in the holes properly. So we had to take all of the extension jams off, all of the trim off, and just try to reset the windows, get the reveals right, and make things much, much more comfortable for my friend's mother-in-law. So again, like we always say, you can have the best product in the world, but if it's not installed properly, it's not going to perform properly. Yeah, and more than likely, it's going to cost you more money down the road. Okay, well let's get into the installation process for this particular window. And I know the first thing I saw him do was uh, set all the scaffolding up, mm -hmm. but then actually cut out the existing window. We want to be as gentle as possible and try not to wreck anything that we aren't going to be replacing. This window going from a double pane glass to a triple pane glass, going from a slider to a casement, you're going to have to make sure that everything's structurally sound. So we wanted to go with our brick mold application, which is really going to strengthen that window. These triple pane windows, as you know, yeah. are going to be heavy. They weigh a lot more than what was in here. So as that window is open, you want to make sure nothing can get tweaked or anything. So we cut everything out. We actually cut the siding back. And we do can do this on stucco, steel, the LP, any of the cement boards, any type of siding outside of brick. We're going to do this and get a nice clean installation. Yeah, I like seeing some of the tricks of the trade there. You used a skill saw to cut around the siding, but then used a multi-tool to cut the nail fin of the old window that was in there. Absolutely. You know, the tools of the trade is what makes this go as fast as we possibly can, but still maintaining first time quality. Okay, and you know, the window came out relatively easy. Mm -hmm. And then I noticed that they were very meticulous in checking the substrate that they're going to be installing the new window on. And if there is any rotten wood or anything that's suspect, of course we're going to replace it. And of course, guys like us are going to have the materials to do that today. We're not going to have to stop. We're not going to have to run to a lumber yard. There's going to be no extra cost in running anywhere or extra time in running anywhere. We're going to be able to do it and do it now. Luckily, we don't have to do much here except for clean it up. We had to cut back the sheetrock a little bit, take the shop back to it, get everything nice and clean as possible so we can start to install our butyl tape. And what we're putting on here today is the barricade tape, ultra flash. It's like an ice and water shield. We're going to come down over the sheathing a little bit, do the whole sill, come up, come up the sides, and make sure should water ever get behind our window, get behind our trim, or wind-driven rain, should it fail somewhere, it's going to be able to come back out over the top of the actual sheathing. So everything is meant to get away from the house. So even if it gets in here, it's not going to rot it out. Well, let me tell you, there's no substitute for attention to detail because that leads to ultimate peace of mind and assurance for the homeowner that they're getting the best installation possible after they made the proper selection of getting the best window possible. So let's get out of their way, let them get back at it, and you and I'll stop back once it's installed. Perfect. Well, Andy, the guys sure made short work of the installation of this window. And I know when we were inside, we talked about how you prefer to add a brick mold. And when we talk about a brick mold, it's this area, right? Yeah, on the outside of the window. It's, it's on the outside of the frame, attaches right to the sheathing. I think it actually gives a look, a more aesthetically pleasing look. But like I said, the most important part of the brick mold is how much more structurally sound it actually makes the window. And I noticed when they were installing it, they were actually screwing right through it. And that's part of the strength that they have. It is, but if you notice, you can't see the fasteners. No, not at all. So all of these brick molds have a channel that pops off, so it's all hidden fasteners. Screw right into the sheathing, pop that channel back over the top of it. Again, there's a bead of silicone on the back side of the brick mold that seals directly to the sheathing. And once everything's in and butted up tight to the channel, another bead of silicone along the outside, again, checks and balances. 
No water or no air can infiltrate this window. Okay, moving on the inside, I know the ceiling around the window was very important. Yeah, you notice how the window was made a little bit smaller than the actual rough opening. Now once that window is set, we actually take our extension jams and move them in a little bit more on the actual window frame. So we give ourselves a nice space, even space, all the way around our window that's just big enough to fit our foam gun and we can foam nice and slow all the way out to the extension jam and then cover that all up with our casing. So you're getting insulation, you're getting air infiltration and a peace of mind. Sure, and that foam is special foam that's a one-to-one -one expansion so you don't have to worry about it pushing and bowing the window which could ultimately affect the operation if it's the wrong foam. Yeah, we see that on a regular basis, especially on double hung windows where they do the foam and now you can only move the window up sure. a little bit because it's bulged over. That's not something that we, we ever see with my guys. Sure. Okay, and then finally, from an aesthetic standpoint, what a great job matching up the trim, the color of the wood. I mean, everything just looks authentic. Yeah, on this particular one, they opted for us to pre-finish the materials. They wanted to see what it looked like, us pre-finishing. So it's our finish shop did a color match to the existing wood grain, blends in perfectly, and now a completely installed window, completely finished, they're gonna come home, and I know they're gonna be very, very happy. Especially being that it's only 15 years old. I know. You would never think that you'd have to replace your windows after only 15 years, but unfortunately, that's becoming more and more common, especially up here in the upper Midwest, that's for sure. And hopefully these people never have to worry about it as long as they're in this house. I'm gonna be around for a long time. And I know that we will never get a call that these windows are failing. Stick around. We'll see how you can save a little money when replacing windows next. Here on today's Home Remodeler. So far in today's show, we've been covering the window replacement process and saw why these wood windows were being replaced after just 15 years. We also reviewed the installation process and saw firsthand the special tools and professional skills needed to do the job correctly. Now let's once again meet up with our contractor, Andy Lindis, from Lindis Construction. Oh, Andy, here's one of the new windows they selected. This looks just beautiful. Yeah. You're hard pressed to tell. I mean, when people think vinyl windows, a lot of people think, oh, it's just an old gray window. No, this is actually a very nice wood grain, very authentic looking. Yeah, and when they get around to putting the stain and the finish on this window, it's going to look like a wood window. As far as how a vinyl window looks like wood, nothing comes close to a season guard. You know what's nice about wood is all the imperfections that are part of it. Nothing's repeatable. Those patterns aren't. Sure. And I think our wood grain does a better job of that. It blends in to natural wood. Yeah, it certainly does. And you know, you just mentioned something there. When they finish finishing off all this, you give that option to homeowners to actually finish the jam extensions and the casing around it? Yeah, you know, probably the most important part of our salespeople's jobs is, is being able to sit down and, and customize a project to that customer. If you can save $100 per window by doing your own finishing, I mean, that sometimes allows you to put in an extra window, or maybe there's a door to replace. Or like this house, they had two bath fans that really needed to get installed. That really covers the cost of those things. Sure, and so you're empathizing with the homeowners and trying to work within their budgets. And since you're allowing them to do that, is that why you take the additional step of putting up some wax paper? Because yeah. if you've ever tried to do trim, it's tough to cut the stain in or even the paint from the wall yeah. into the window. It's about 20% of our customers choose to do it this way. If they want us to pre-finish it, again, I have a guy that specializes just in putting stain and finishing on windows. But we're gonna allow it, we're gonna come in, put the bare wood, we're gonna put this nice wax paper, try to make the process as easy as possible for them where they can come in right away, refinish it, and give them a nice finished window. Now, you know, I wanna get into what to expect when your professional contractor arrives on site. And we always talk about measuring, how important measuring is, but really, what are you measuring when you're walking around a house measuring rough openings? Well, when we first get to the house, we're gonna, we're gonna take a walk around with you. We're gonna talk about every aspect of the house. We're gonna wanna look at the house as a whole, look at the building sciences between why this house does what it does. We're going to want to look at insulation, ventilation, air infiltration, the type of mechanicals you have in your house, not just your windows. I know it sounds weird that a guy looking at windows is going to want to look at all that, but when you can see how the whole house performs, you can really make this house better. 
Now, when we start to measure for windows, there's a couple of different ways. In order to give a price that first visit, we're just going to take with height measurements and see if they're going to be redoing okay. their own trim. Well, let's so, just actually do this, and so yeah. I understand exactly what you're talking about. So, so do you go to the outside, to the inside? Go to the inside of the, of the jam extension there. Okay. So we got 90 by 45. Again, rough measurements. I'm not, I don't have to be exact here. I'm just measuring for pricing. This is going to allow me to go to my chart and see 90 inch window. This, can I even get that in a three lead slider? We put this into our computer system, automatically pops up all of our options, lets us price things out for the homeowner. Now, once we go through and we pick the options, the styles of the windows, the type of trim that you're going to get, uh, any of the other things, we agree on a price, we figure out what we can do to make this house the best way possible. Before we order it, an expert's going to come out to your house. All this guy does is measure windows for order. So he's going to look at things like jam depth. You know, all walls are, aren't created equal. The type of siding you have, whether or not we're going to be putting a brick mold. I mean, this is just one style of trim that we can do. But if you have other trim in your house that's different, he knows where exactly to go to get to match that trim or match that color. So everything looks like it originally was put in the house. And that all comes back to proper measuring, having somebody just do that? The guys that don't do that, here's what happens. They come out, say they got 10 windows to install. They get through, they get to the eighth window and they figure out, you know, this one window doesn't quite fit right. It's a little bit too small or a little bit too wide. So they put it in and maybe the, the frame bows in. Then it doesn't operate well. Or it's a case of window that catches right there at that. Sure. Or they can't install it at all. It's that far off. For us, first time quality is the number one thing we look for with our installation crews. Can we finish the job the day we showed up? And having checks and balances, like a guy that only measures the windows for order, same thing with our siding, our roofing. There's an expert that goes out to your house after the sales guy and measures everything for order so when we start, we can finish, and we almost always do. Sure, and you know, this is one of those windows. This is a, you know, I mentioned how heavy it was outside. Yeah. Effortless, I mean, look at that. You can turn it one finger, you could turn this window. That just shows how well it's manufactured and more importantly, how well it's installed. And thanks for coming on today's show and walking us through your process. My pleasure. Well, we're all out of time for this week's show. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again next time on today's Home Remodeling. The preceding program was sponsored by the Today's Home Remodeler Television Network.